In this video, I'll be deriving an expression for peak time. In the previous video, I have explained what do we mean by peak time. Now let us understand what do we mean by peak time. It is the time required for the response to reach the peak value for the very first time. And also it is indicated by the letter TP. And our ultimate goal is to derive this particular expression. So peak time that is equal to phi divided by omega d, where omega d is known as damped frequency of oscillation, which is expressed in terms of radian per second. If you wanted to write the damped frequency of oscillation in terms of natural frequency of oscillation omega n, you can follow this expression. That means omega d is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square, where zeta is known as damping ratio. Okay. Our ultimate goal is to reach this particular expression. Okay. So that we are supposed to derive. So I would like to show you what is peak time with the help of a response. Okay, consider second order under damped response and uh, the graph indicates C of t versus time. Clear? Here, the time required to reach the peak value for the very first time. So this is your peak time, C. The time required to reach the response. What is response? C of t is the response. Time required to reach the response for the peak value. This is your peak value. Yes or no? Uh, at the very first time. Okay. So this is representing the peak value. And uh, this time is generally represented by peak time. It is indicated by TP. Okay. So this is the peak value of response. And this will be the uh, peak time TP. Okay. Now we have to derive an expression for peak time. I will be showing you how to derive the expression for peak time in a simple and precise manner. Let us move on to the derivation. The derivation comprises of three steps. First and foremost, you have to write down the expression for the response C of t for under damped system. Later on, you have to differentiate the response that is C of t with respect to time. That's a second procedure. So in order to calculate the peak time, what you can do is you have to recall the principle of maxima and minima in differentiation. That means to get the maximum value, we have to apply the principle of maxima or minima in calculus. Okay, these are the three steps which are involved in the computation of peak time. First in the form, see, I need to apply the principle of maxima or minima. That means the differential the differentiation of the response d by dt of c of t Whenever t is equal to tp, that should be equal to zero. This is actually called the principle of maxima or minima. And you must have learned during lower classes. Anyway, uh, let us apply uh, this principle of maxima or uh, minima uh, in case of uh, c of t. Someone will call principle of maxima and minima and you can call maxima or minima principle also. First, according to the step, we will follow the response c of t is given by 1 minus e to the power minus zeta omega and t divided by uh, square root of 1 minus zeta square into sine omega dt plus theta. So this is your first step. The first step is over. Okay. Next step, what you are supposed to do is you have to differentiate the c of t with respect to time. Or you can call c dash of t. C dot c dash of t or directly you can write it, d by dt of c of t. Both are same. d by dt of c of t. Okay, so this part is over. Now you have to apply uh, the differentiation. So anyway, differentiation of the constant term that is equal to zero and you have to concentrate the second part. So before how to make out the second part, you can see the second part. There are two segments, correct? So this is the first segment and this will be the second term, first term and this will be the second term. So let me call x is the first term is x, the second term is y. Okay. So for this circumstance, how to apply the differentiation? You have to recall the principle of product rule. d by dt of xy equal to x into dy by dt plus y into dx by dt. So this principle you have to apply. And uh, this is just for your information. And uh, while solving, it will be helpful for you. So let me call, this is the first term. Which is the first term? This is your first term, term number one. And uh, this is the second term. So likewise, you can apply. Now let us solve this. Anyway, a differentiation of the first term, differentiation of a constant that is equal to zero. Same thing I have written there. 
Then differentiation of the second part, I have to concentrate it. Here I have to apply uh, the product rule. As you know that this is the first term and this will be the second term. So do apply the product rule and work out. Okay, parallelly better bring one paper and you can work out parallelly. And verify the answer also. So first term, second term. Okay, that means of the first term that is e to the power minus my my uh, c there is a minus okay so don't ignore this minus e to the power minus eta omega and t divided by square root of one minus eta square into what is the second term differentiation of the second term sin omega dt plus theta so what is the uh, d by dt of sin t it must be cos t okay d by dt of sin t d by dt of uh, sin t should be equal to cos t It must be equal to cos t. True, but what is the answer for d by dt of sin 2t? d by dt of sin 2t. So, what is the answer? It is actually cos 2t, but you have to apply the chain rule. Again, you have to go for the differentiation of 2t. So, what is the differentiation of 2t? It must be 2. Anyway, dt by dt that is equal to 1. So, answer is 2 cos 2t. Same manner you have to apply here. Similarly, you can see here. It is not only sin t, but omega d t. Okay, anyway, theta now problem, it will be 0 only. Differentiation of theta, uh, that will be, uh, we consider this is constant. Okay, anyway, chain rule uh, will be applicable only for this term. That means uh, sin uh, omega d t t, omega d into t. So, here, uh, you have to apply the chain rule as like here which i mentioned right now okay let us apply the chain rule also here see uh, cos omega dt plus theta correct sin omega dt uh, that means uh, uh, the differentiation of sin omega dt must be cos omega dt plus theta not only that omega d is here no it's a constant so omega d i have written there then second term, which is the second term, your second term is sin omega dt plus theta, that is your second term. Then differentiation of the first term. Okay, that means d by dt of e to the power t, that is equal to e to the power t. Same thing I have written there, not only that. See, d by dt of e to the power t means uh, answer will be e to the power t, but if I ask e to, e to the power 2t, okay, suppose e to the power 2t. For this case, what is the answer? e to the power 2t, not only this, but you have to apply the chain rule. That means 2. Clear? Okay. Again, you have to do the differentiation. Same manner I have applied here. Minus e to the power my, uh, minus zeta omega and t divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square into minus zeta omega. N. Okay, clear. It is available here. Now, again, you have to apply the uh, chain rule. Now, let us simplify. How, how to simplify once again? Here one minus is available and here also minus. Minus into minus, it becomes plus. Okay. Same thing I have written. Down. Okay. Now I would like to rearrange the terms. Rearrange in the sense, uh, this term I will be writing first. Okay. Just a moment. So this term I will be writing first. This I would like to write first. Same thing I have written here. See, this I will be writing first and this term I will be writing second. Anyway, x plus y is equal to y plus x. Same thing. Okay. Do one thing. After rearranging, put omega d is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus theta square. And I already explained the relation between omega d and omega n. So, what is omega d and the omega n I have written in detail. And uh, see, wherever you can see omega d, please do put om uh, omega n in the square root of 1 minus theta square. Same thing I have done here. See, you can observe here. Only this much. Okay, this you have to replace. I, I hope you are following me. Please call this equation as first equation. Okay, you can call this expression as first equation and, okay. Now what you can do is, uh, look at equation number one. This is your equation number one. So let us take the common term outside. Okay, as a part of simplification, let us, uh, let us take the common term uh, from each segment. This is your x and this will be the y. 
from x and y you have to take you have to segregate the common term which is the common term obviously this is your common term see here it is available and uh, this part you can able to see this is one so this is one of the common term not only this omega n is also a common term see very clearly it is uh, available here so what i have done is so this particular term i have taken as a common term and i just rearranged remaining things okay this part is completed so i have rewritten once again so do one thing you can call uh, this equation as second equation whatever i have updated the equation that you can call it as second equation so you can call this is second equation now let us do some modification at second equation what modification we can make out now you consider one triangle okay consider the triangle this is one of the right angle triangle um, base uh, hypotenuse and height so what is sin theta opposite side divided by hypotenuse that is equal to square root of 1 minus theta square what is cos theta adjacent side divided by hypotenuse that is zeta it is very clear so do one thing apply the principles instead of sin theta and cos theta do put square root of 1 minus zeta square and zeta respectively instead of zeta what you can put instead of zeta you can put cos theta it is very clear instead of theta we can put cos theta it is very clear and uh, in in spite of square root of 1 minus theta square do put sin theta okay do put sin theta so same thing i would like to do instead of square root of 1 minus theta square i'll be putting sin theta instead of zeta i'll be putting cos theta so let us remodify equation number 2 so the new equation see cos theta available here and the sin theta i have modified okay now look at here look at equation number 3 consider the equation number 3 this is in the form of a sin a let me call this is sin a sin a this will be cos b minus cos a and sin b what is the expression for this you must have studied in trigonometric relation so what is the expression that means sin a minus b same thing i have written over there identify the relation you have to recall the trigonometric relation and just identify how we can make out this so this is nothing but sin a minus b okay so what you can do is you have to remodify equation number 3 and apply the principle of trigonometry and uh, remodify the equation this particular term as sin a minus b okay now i am going to write what is a omega dt plus theta what is b theta of course it is very correct so omega dt plus theta minus theta theta minus theta is nothing but zero this is zero what are the terms which are retaining that means uh, omega n uh, e to the power minus eta omega n t upon square root of 1 minus eta square into sin omega dt omega d t correct where zeta is known as damping ratio there is no more changes let us continue so this is the final expression if you want you can modify once again that means omega n divided by square root of 1 minus square not mandatory if you want you can modify then e to the power minus eta omega n n into t sin omega d t okay this is the final expression for uh, d by dt of c of t for second order under damped system so second step is over we have completed the second step okay please recall whatever i explained at the beginning there are three segment for this derivation now what you can do is apply the principle of maxima or minima so one of the major application of uh, mathematics in, in the field of engineering so put t is equal to tp that means uh, we are considering peak time if t is equal to t, tp of course uh, and it is very clear that c of t becomes c of tp okay so instead of t wherever you can able to see t you have to put tp now what i have to modify that means wherever i am able to see t you have to put tp here instead of t i will be putting tp here also instead of t i am going to put tp so please do modify the third equation as fourth equation i'll be modifying this particular equation as fourth equation okay uh, equation number is just for my convenience if you are uh, not comfortable to put equation number no no problem you can directly move on there is no uh, mandatory that uh, you have to put the equation number this is just for my convenience so i have modified the equation number 3 and uh, updated the equation as 4 later on you can apply principle of maxima and minima 
that means uh, for for maximum condition or minimum condition uh, that means uh, for for example consider the waveform this may be one of the waveform see there may be two peak so this is one peak this will be another peak here you can in order to calculate this value you can able to apply the principle of maxima or minima at that time slope will be zero okay same principle is applied over here for maxima or minimum condition i can apply for the principle of maximum minimum at that time we are we are recalling that the slope of that particular point will be zero so same thing i'll be applying here that means uh, d by dt of d by dtp of c of tp that is equal to zero okay please update this is equation number 5 consider the equation number 5 so from equation 5 we will be getting some information that means e to the power minus zeta omega and tp that never be equal to zero it must be above zero exponential no so it is above zero it never be reaches to zero so that is one information i am getting from equation number 5 but if i look at this term this will be absolutely constant okay omega and divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square depends on the natural frequency of oscillation and damping ratio damping ratio will be always less than 1 anyway this will be also a positive value and this this also will be a positive value altogether these two terms it will be always greater than uh, zero it never reaches to zero only the thing is sin omega d tp that becomes zero and compared to these two ter terminology this is actually very less and that will be tending towards zero so we are making some approximation okay so sin omega d tp that is equal to zero so based on this approximation, let us write, remodify sin omega d, tp is equal to 0. I need to calculate the value of omega d, tp. That means sin inverse of 0. Sin inverse of 0 is nothing but n phi. But in this context, I am going to call uh, n is equal to 1. Such cases, omega d, tp becomes phi. Okay, phi in radian only. From this expression, I can easily compute the value of tp. Therefore, tp is equal to pi divided by omega d. If you wanted to write omega d in terms of natural frequency of oscillation, omega d means damped frequency of oscillation. If you would like to write omega d in terms of uh, natural frequency of oscillation, then you can modify pi by omega d is equal to pi divided by omega n into square root of 1 minus theta square. So this is the final expression for a peak time. Okay. So we have to follow the three sequence. First in the foremost, recall what is the expression for C of t. Number one, later on differentiate C of t with respect to time afterwards instead of t you have to put tp because you need to make out the value of peak time at the end apply the principle of maxima minima so if you apply the principle of maxima minima d by dt p of c of tp that is equal to zero from that expression uh, you can finally reach uh, peak time tp is equal to pi divided by omega d so this is one of the important expression uh, which will be helpful for design of various systems and you can solve many more problems okay so you can able to analyze uh, the peak time of a particular system by using this expression clear hope the session is useful and if you are having any queries please do put up in the comment box finally thank you for watching this video